Are there any announcements that you have uh, to share this morning? Yes. My great aunt turned 90. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. That's great. Wonderful for you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, remember to pray for her when we have the uh, birthday prayer. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Thank you again for having me here this second week. Uh, Father Evan Clendenin, again, my name. Thank you for having me here at St. Benedict's in Lacey. Now, you are one of the few Episcopal churches around who is open for in the flesh worship, which is a really wonderful thing and also a responsibility. And the way I've been thinking about all of these precautions and procedures that we're learning how to do, and we, I myself have to be reminded about every now and again. We all need a reminder now and again. Um, one, it's a contribution to the common good. And I think we can go right to scripture to find that. But two, I myself love it when someone gives me an opportunity to slow down and notice what I'm doing. Maybe especially when I'm in a bit of a hurry or a fuss and you know you get the nervous energy going and you can just stop. Say, oh, I can slow down and look at this a little differently and uh, it's an opportunity to see and meet God again. So, at least when we come here and you have to put on the mask and it can be a little bit awkward and bothersome at times. Or when you see that person that you love and care about and you want to go up and hug them or kiss them or and you go, I'm going to stand about seven feet from you and that feels a little awkward. Um, it's an invitation from God to see again and receive uh, a new invitation of grace and mercy. So whatever role you have to play in, in that, in creating that hospitable environment for others, take it up. Don't grow weary in doing good. And uh, receive it as an opportunity to see God and receive God again. And maybe just to slow down. Maybe we all need a little bit of that, uh, too. Yeah. Well, we give thanks for that we meet today on the traditional land of the first people of Lacey, the Squally, Cowlitz, and Puget Sound Salish people who have been its custodians for thousands of years, caring for it and nurturing it. We pray for all who live on this land, Pay our respects to the native leaders, past, present, and emerging. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
that when he comes again with power and great glory, he may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We see that for the readings from Holy Spirit. reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to set them and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates, and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his, made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the lands of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, and put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them, and said, please join me in Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people, and find your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers said of us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praise of the deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established the law of Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children and their children, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commands. A reading from Saul's, from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and are left until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, 
with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps, went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became sleepy, became drowsy, and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! And all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise reply, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. The door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore. You know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. inviting you to step toward it and let your life be changed by that step you take toward what keeps you awake. What's keeping you awake? What's waking you up? You know, I was talking to a woman once who had fallen. And when she fell, she hit her head, 
And then she was admitted to the hospital, but she doesn't remember being admitted to the hospital because when she fell and hit her head, she blacked out. I guess you could say she fell asleep after a certain phrase. And uh, when she arrived there, the doctors weren't quite sure that she would make it. And in the hospital, she woke up. And once she'd woken up and things were stabilized and she wanted to visit her, I could talk to her, and uh, she told me about how she had survived her fall and how she had woken up in a place she didn't know she had been taken to. She looked back on not only that fall, but a number of accidents in her life, and she looked on them with a new set of eyes. She said, you know, I'm feeling really weak right now. But I know that in my weakness, God is closer to me than ever before. And I can look back on all those times when I had all those accidents, and I realized that God's mercy was there because guess what? Oh, they could have been a lot worse. Maybe it's like the Israelites remembering as they renew their covenant. Covenants are things we renew. They look back on their time in the wilderness and they realize that God was walking with them, protecting them. In a time that, yeah, maybe could have been better, but boy, it could have been a whole lot worse. So this woman could look back on those times and see mercy at work and receive that mercy now as she learned to walk again. This business about what's keeping us awake and what we're waking up to it goes within our heart for sure, where Christ is meeting us. And it goes for our families, and our communities, and our congregations. Now in this regard, we might consider the uh, community, congregation, or congregations in Thessalonica that Paul was talking to in the letter we heard from today. Now several weeks ago, if you're saving your worship leaflets, or if you want to turn in your Bible at home to the beginning of the Thessalonians letter. Uh, a few weeks ago we heard the beginning of the letter. Now we're kind of getting the end of the letter. Skip the middle part. It's a short letter, you might just want to read it. Anyway. Paul and his co-workers uh, in the Gospel wrote to the Thessalonians and uh, knew that they were a community struggling with how to work and to wait with, with faith and with patience uh, in a time of uncertainty, a time when uh, they had some sort of fearful expectations about what might be coming. So Paul and his co-workers, they applied two remedies in that letter. They, they both flow from their, their love and their gratitude. And the first one was that. If we go, you go back a few weeks to the beginning of the letter, you'll see Paul and his co-workers just saying again and again, I, we are just so grateful for you Thessalonians. We're just so grateful for you. This gratitude that they, they felt and expressed for the Thessalonians meant to, to give them some inner resources for patience so that they could draw from gratitude from another to carry out all the small daily works of love and care that were necessary to live their life in community. But you know, that gratitude that Paul and his co-workers expressed for the Thessalonians, it did more than that woke them up to the present moment. It snapped them out of thinking about all the stuff that was bad that was going to happen in the future that they've been hearing or talking about. To 
this present moment where someone was giving thanks for them, where God was present to them and giving them gifts to live from and to exercise now. We too, you too, we too, can make this our practice right now. You can let Paul and his co-workers apply that remedy to us in uh, as simple a way as, I don't know, maybe when you're walking out on the sidewalk and you see a roly-poly bug, you know, crawling across the sidewalk, you might give thanks for that. Or, you know, I, I don't know, I think it's pretty exciting when I see the, uh, the beetles crossing the street. Uh, or, you know, you might just, yeah, forget about listening to the preacher and just look at this wood that's in front of you. And look at all the wisdom and beauty that God has put into this world right there in front of you to look at. Or maybe if you're sharing a cup of coffee, well, you're having your own cup of coffee, and your hands are cold after a chilly morning like this, and you can just rest with that warmth on your hands. Well, that's the first remedy that Paul and his co-workers applied. The second one we get to today. The background of this story, we might say, is that the Thessalonians were fearful and that maybe they had a sort of a reasonable amount of fear. And then, well, we're not quite sure, maybe some teachers came through town hawking their wares, maybe some lurid novels about crazy end time schemes or conspiracy theories and got them really freaked out about what was going to happen. Or maybe some difficult but manageable matter had cropped up in the congregation or between congregations in the community. And the more they talked about it, you know, the more they thought intractable and scary and this person and that, you know, no, 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 no. You know how it goes sometimes. And really what was going on is that as they had been being taught some things that maybe weren't quite right, or when they were talking about these things and they were kind of getting each other off the rails, uh, they began to be afraid that when Christ returned, and for these early Christians this was a very lively expectation that Christ was returning soon. They were afraid that the ones that they loved and who had died would be separated from them. They were afraid that they would be separated from those they loved. But Paul corrects their understanding. That is the remedy. He corrects their understanding that when Christ, who is making all things new, returns, the dead will not be left behind. We won't be left behind. Quite the opposite. Paul confirms for them, yes, Jesus Christ will return. But when he does, the living and the dead will both meet him. In fact, those who have already died, they, they will be sort of ushered to the front of the line and everyone will be brought in. Everyone will be brought there into that banquet, to that feast, at that table where the coffee cups are warm. And there's beauty, unlike we've beheld, where Christ is there with us face to face. So don't get caught up in the timeline. We don't want to bicker too much about who merits what. And instead we can simply accept the gift of wakefulness 
that God is waking all of us from our sleep. So what's keeping you awake? What are you awakening to here and now, these past weeks, today? Maybe it looks like a worry or a fear. Maybe it looks like trying to make ends meet. Maybe it's a social wrong or, or being confronted just with our own weakness and mortality. But these things are invitations to follow. These are graces that are extended to us if we can wake up and receive them. So I hope that we can all be awake. I pray that I and we can be awake to the small, important moments, the ways a word or an image, or even that roly-poly bug crossing a once frosty sidewalk. Give you a little encouragement for the day. And you can wake up to things with a little less worry, a little less fear. And maybe that word that you received, that image you received of encouragement, can then be the word you can offer to another. Like Paul says to the Thessalonians, offer these words, encourage one another with these words.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Bishops Justin, Michael, Greg, Ernie, for this congregation, for John, Robert, Kathy, Tony, and Evan, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. For the President Donald and our national, state, and local leaders, for words and actions promoting justice in the health and well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Tessa, Chris, Frank, Jim, Dante, Liz, Brandon, Wendy, Sarah, Tom, Steve, Isabel, Liana, Natasha, Father Rob, Mitch, Father Ed, Dorita, Liana, and Shannon. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God, pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed and those who have died from the coronavirus, for those who have died from the coronavirus and their families. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for family away from home for school, work, or military service. Mark, Sunny, Madeline, Robert, Michael, Scott, Andrew, Evelma, Shane, Claire, Jennifer, David, and the crew of the U.S. Coast Guard Resolute. I ask your thanksgiving for our ministries, especially our food bank coordinators, Michael, Dave, Judy, and Dre. I ask your prayers for children who are abused, neglected, or hungry, especially those incarcerated in immigration detention centers and victims of human trafficking. I invite your prayers for the victims of the wildfires, especially for those on the front lines fighting the fires and the victims of the hurricanes in the Gulf Coast and rescue workers. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day.
celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal peace. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, 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 Father,
of the tree. Eternal God, heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 